everyone. We are here recording a conversation with Johnny Madison in con as a part of her exhibition that's on now with Eric Atkinson at Westland Gallery. Um, it's hanging on the walls, brightening our gallery space now, and it continues all the way until September 18th, 2021. Thanks, Johnny, for talking with me today. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Yeah, I'm looking forward to diving in. There's a lot to talk about with your work, right. um, and I'm excited to share some of the stories behind the pieces with our audience today. Okay. I have no secrets. I'm going to tell you everything. <laughs> Open book. Yeah, it'll be a good conversation yes. today. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about at the beginning was your work has been through many evolutions yes. over your career. Yes. And you have really moved from medium to medium, mm -hmm. um, technique to technique based on what information you wanted to share, right? You yes. moved to a new style. Um, can you talk to us about a few different styles you've tried and kind of how you've evolved through, through those different series? Yes, I, I started in New York City with oil painting. It was the time when abstract expressionism was the rage, so that's how I was painting. And of course, oils was the best medium for that. And acrylics hadn't come out yet, and we didn't have acrylic painting, we yes. just had poster painting and oil paints. And then uh, when I was working on my master's in Michigan, I took a watercolor course. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was the best thing in the world. And I started doing landscape painting, which um, watercolors is just so suited for landscape. That was a wonderful medium at the time. I did that for many, many years, sold them like crazy. I did a lot of flower gardens for people. Okay. And uh, then I kind of got tired of it. You know, I got tired of the, the realism mm -hmm. aspect. So I, I started doing uh, fiber art, mainly because I was working on a project about women who worked in Canada during World War II. And, you know, there was this feeling of wanting to make it kind of look in a way like the 1940s, so mm -hmm. I was using old textiles and um, photo transfers and things like that. So that went on for many years. Yeah, I think fabric is well suited to like talking about domestic yes. roles You're as well, right. right? You're right. So after your um, series mm -hmm. um, about women and trying to channel the 40s kind of through your medium mm -hmm. and through your materials, where did you go next? I, my husband passed away and during the time he was ill, he had cancer, during the time he was ill, I was keeping a sketchbook and a notebook just about what we were going through, mm -hmm. what my feelings were, and there were times when I wanted to run away. I thought I can't take care of him anymore. Yeah. I said he was sick for seven years, and I was really, really tired. I never did run away. <laughs> I was holding his hand when he died. Um, but I decided to put that into an exhibition. So I did, oh, I can't remember, there was a number of paintings, 20 or more paintings. That, that took information from the sketchbook and from my notebooks. And that was, that was kind of a mixed medium. It's, it's when I started thinking about acrylics, but I hadn't got right into acrylic painting. Yeah. So those works were um, a combination of photo transfer, acrylic paint, and fabric bits, things like that. Yeah. And they were dark. You know, because of what I was going through. Absolutely. And when I finished that series, and, and it went to several galleries, um, I decided that I needed color. I thought, oh my god, I've been painting in brown and gray and black for several years now. Yeah. I need color. So I went to the art supply store and I was looking around and I thought, well, let's try acrylics. And I loved it. Yeah. And, and my work got much more abstract and, and the colors got really, really bright and I just thought it was great to, to work that way. Yeah. I love that. I think um, it's very authentic mm -hmm. to just respond to like, what's in my life? What's happening? Mm -hmm. um, what do I want to communicate? And then picking the medium and the color palette that's best suited to, know. you know, that conversation. It's so good to pick a medium that tells a story. Yeah. Like if, if I had done the um, acrylic paintings when I was doing the women in World War II, it just wouldn't have worked at all. It wouldn't, yeah. Yeah. 
So um, I've always been really impressed with, with that. And um, I also like, uh, you obviously are confident and just picking up a new medium and giving it a try and seeing where it takes you. So yes. There's yeah. no use being afraid. <laughs> I mean, in my life, uh, as long as I can remember, I've said feel the fear and do it anyway. I like that. You're nervous, you're, you're not sure you know what you're doing, but you just do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those like negative emotions, like nervousness or fear or worry about doing a bad job of it, yes. can prevent people from ever trying something new. Yes. So. And sometimes it's doing a bad job, like I've come out with, I don't know how many, probably a hundred bad paintings. <laughs> and all I do is turn them upside down and put some gesso on parts of them, leave other parts exposed, and I start the painting again. And I love those. They turn out better than ones that I've started on a white canvas. Yeah, I like that too. Um, you're, you have taken approaches like that before that are kind of pulling in bits of like older work. Right. Even from that series um, about your husband passing, I've seen the journals right. and then I've seen some of the, the finished works, mm -hmm. but kind of taking from this source material and building it into other works. Right. Um, and I think the same would be that technique of pulling little bits of a failed painting mm -hmm. through into something new. Mm -hmm. uh, and in keeping with that, in this collection, you've done some collaging as well. Yes, that's kind of, I, I was going to say that's kind of new. It's new for this particular work, but I have done it before, mm -hmm. you know, because I have had bits of fabric that I've collaged on, on the back, background and added other things. But it's kind of new for these, this kind of painting. Mm -hmm. And I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. You're collaging um, prints of your own work and found materials, is that right? Yes, there's, there's a little bit of found material. Mostly it's my own work. Okay. So I, I, I photograph all my work, no, no, matter how it, no matter how bad it may be. <laughs> I photograph all my work. And I put it into my computer. And then I print it, and of course, if you know if the painting is this big, and the printer is going to come out this big, yeah. So I'll cut out little pieces of it and apply it to a painting that I'm working on. I like that. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you find that you're um, looking at the painting and picking the collage elements to fit into the painting, or do you collage and then take you know a cue from that? That collaged piece. No, uh, the painting is almost finished. Okay. Except for that last detail of the collage, and I, I have this um, board on a foam cord board. Yeah. And I've got little bits and pieces that I've cut out that I kind of liked. Yeah. And and I, I walk around with the painting and like that that didn't work, and I grab another one. I go, oh no, that didn't work. And it, you know, it takes me just as long to figure out what collage pieces are going to work as it did to do the whole painting. Thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We were just having an artist talk with Tracy Bulcha for the last exhibition and she said, um, you know, the thinking mm -hmm. portion of creating art can be just as important as the painting time and can right. take just as much time, right? right. Sometimes yeah. you need to sit with it yes. and see where it needs to go. Um, beautiful. There's um, also a unique technique that you're using for these um, acrylic paintings, kind of the way that you start them with your brush. Uh, I remember you telling me when you first started acrylic painting and you were kind of trying to force yourself to be looser and do right. something new, uh, you came up with this idea. What yes. was that? Yeah. Well, I put the canvas on the floor so it's far away from me. What I don't want to do is have it on an easel and with a little brush go up there and, and do the composition. So I put it on the floor, I've got a brush on, on a long dowel, I think yeah. it's three feet long, and I'll do a drawing um, with that. And it, by drawing, I mean it's really rough. Yeah. You know, it, it'll be shapes or whatever I'm thinking. And um, then I, after that dries, then I put it up on the easel and start adding color to it. Mm -hmm. It's a nice way to keep yourself from getting too caught up in the details because yeah. you kind of can't do it can't. with that. No. Yeah, I thought that was a really great technique. Good. Uh, I think as an artist, you've always been someone who needs to have a concept or an idea behind your work. Yes. So, you know, you've got to have that starting off point and some That's kind correct. of message. Uh, one of those in the earlier work was the experience of being a woman 
mm -hmm. and particularly a woman in the art world. Right. Can you tell me a bit about what your experience has been throughout your career as a woman? Well, a lot of rejections, um, you know, from galleries who seem to think that men are a lot better at art than women. That, that was in, you know, early years. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm old now. <laughs> <laughs> My career goes back to the 1960s. Yeah. And women hardly ever got one-person shows. Right. They often didn't even get in a gallery. So I went through a lot of that. And, um, yeah, so I started thinking about doing work about that and, and doing paintings and drawings and so forth about how difficult it was for women to get anywhere in the art world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a few women did, like Georgia O'Keeffe. Absolutely. Yeah, a few women did, but the majority just had a really hard time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I don't really know exactly, you know, what that is or uh, why that has been such a pervasive issue. Like, I, I still think there are a lot oh. of male artists um, and yes. there are so many talented female artists that I know. Well, look at look at our history books. Yeah. How many pages are dedicated to women? Almost yeah. nothing. Uh -huh. When I took our history at, at Pratt in New York, our art history book might have, you know, it was, it was a big volume, mm -hmm. and we did two years of it. There might have been four female artists in the whole book. Right. And I thought, at the time, I thought, well, where are they? Are, are there no female artists? You yeah. Know? It really makes you wonder. It does. I think it's hard for young artists. Mm -hmm. Like everyone needs role models to look up to and give right. them that confidence to pursue the career, right. right? So you need to be following in the footsteps of other right. women artists, and if they're not getting written about, mm -hmm. and then you're not learning about them, yes. it's, it's hard to get yes. going, right? Yes, I've been mentoring a, a young girl, Abigail. She's just the sweetest thing, and she's just starting at Beale. And so I, I've been trying to help her, and, and we've been together a few times now. That's amazing. And I like doing things like that. I would yeah. love to mentor young female artists. Yeah. Did you have any role models growing up uh, no. in the art world? Yeah. No, I didn't. No. Yeah. No, no artists <laughs> in my family at all. The only thing, I was adopted, and in my real family, I guess I call them my real family, my birth, Your birth family. Birth family I didn't meet them until I was perhaps in my 50s, and there were quite a few artists in that family, and I found out that my father loved to draw cartoons, and, and apparently in school the teachers used to get him to do the drawing of things on the board. Really? He's so good at it. That's fascinating. That's so interesting. So in your adoptive family, being a creative one and perhaps a not very creative family, right. um, as a child, did you do a lot of arts? Did oh, you get encouragement for yeah. that? My parents always bought me a lot of art supplies. That's great. My mother liked to do um, sewing, so she made quilts and she did rug booking, things like that, embroidery. Yeah. So she was creative in her own way. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, I, I've always drawn for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. uh, I know creating art has provided, obviously, you've made your career on it, a lot of um, fulfillment for you. Yeah. And in light of the past two years, a year and a half uh, with COVID, those kind of you know personal hobbies and things that we can do to fill our time mm -hmm. in a way that feels you know productive and, and fulfilling is so important. Mm -hmm. And the you've been making these abstract paintings for a while now, but yes. the newest ones are kind of inspired by the experiences of the last yes. um, year and a half. And you had a recent exhibition at the St. Thomas um, Public Art Gallery yes. uh, called An Interior Life. Yes. And I think that's in part connected to the works we see here yes. in the gallery as well. Can you yes. tell us about that series? Well, I absolutely loved COVID lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> A few artists have. <laughs> I was in heaven. I nobody was bothering me. Nobody, you know, I get people all the time who want to go out to lunch or go out to dinner and come to visit. And I didn't have any appointments, of course, for yeah. a year and a half, other than seeing the oncologist. But I didn't have any uh, social engagements. Yeah. I could just paint, and I just painted like crazy. Yeah. And and now that it, it's not exactly over, but I get we're getting out more. Yeah. I'm only painting now, maybe two or three times a week, and right. I hate that. <laughs> so yes. Got to 
find that happy medium, I guess, yes, right? I Getting guess in the so. studio and, uh, and the social things as well. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, so you wrote about kind of in the statement that you, you made about an interior life mm -hmm. in that collection, kind of wrote about um, daily practices and things like that that you know you enjoy with yourself and right. having kind of a healthy relationship with yourself almost. Right. Um, art obviously is one for you. Is there anything else that you've really enjoyed the last year and a half? You're a um, reader or? I, I read mystery books. Yeah? Because <laughs> when I was in university, I read all the classics. You know, I took a lot of English courses and English literature courses. So I did all that and now I just enjoy reading mysteries. Yeah. But I don't read during the day at all. I'll look at art books during the day. I'm not good at reading art books. I'm so bad at that. <laughs> I look at the pictures and I think, you know, I've got to read this. And I'll start out reading and, and then I go, nah, I can't do that. <laughs> do you find it's because you get inspired to make something of your, of your I, own? I think so. And, and I don't find the authors terribly interesting when yeah. they write about art. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to hear more personal things about the artist. I would too. Yeah. I think, um, especially like the older tradition of kind of art critique, mm -hmm. it can be a bit inaccessible for people, like the language right. um, and even the, the content. Uh, that's why I prefer conversations like this that are a bit right. more informal and just kind of getting to know the artists and right. their experiences. Right. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned um, that visits to the oncologist were also part um, of your last yes. year and a half. Yes. Um, and so you have a cancer diagnosis right now. Yes, and I'm, here, I'm in stage four. Yeah. There's no stage five, but I found out. <laughs> okay. Yes. That's what they give you, stage four. Yeah. yeah. So um, we have been very impressed by the way uh, we've been saying you're living with cancer yeah. and you're really living and um, making the most of, of your days and yes. you seem very um, fulfilled. I'm sure not every day is the same. Mm -hmm. um, no, I'm, I'm kind of okay with it. Yeah. You know, if, if I die soon, well, you know, that's okay. It, mm -hmm. that doesn't, the thought doesn't bother me. Yeah. I have signed up for the medical assistance in death. Yeah. So if I'm not having any pain, I'm not having any nausea, yeah. everything seems to be fine right now. Yeah. The chemo seems to be working for me. Mm -hmm. So, and it, it won't, of course, it won't forever. Yeah. Um, a year ago this week, I was told I only had a few months to live and a year at the most. Yeah. And I'm, I'm still feeling fine. Past that year point, yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. amazing. Yeah, so um, the oncologist, when I first met him, he told me that I probably had two or three years to live. And then recently I saw him again. He says, you know, I think you've got five years to live. He said, you're doing so well. Yeah. So, but it doesn't bother me one way or the other. You know, I've, I would like to be around to paint more. But it, you know, if I'm not, it's no big deal. My son will get lots of money. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. How did you reach that point? Did it come naturally for you, or was there yeah. kind of a process? No, it, it did. I th when when I was told that I only had a few months to live, I thought, oh, okay. Like I didn't get upset or anything. Do I, you think your past life experiences have helped you receive that news in a? In I've, I've had. I have had a difficult life. I've had a lot of problems in my life and a lot of pain and fear and worry. And, um, and, and now I'm thinking, well, at least that will all be over. <laughs> maybe, maybe another bad thing won't come along. Maybe this is it. So mm -hmm. I'm okay with it. Yeah. I appreciate you being willing to talk with me about that. And you mentioned before this chat that that was, mm -hmm. you know, on the table of conversation. And I think sometimes that's one of, you know, cancer and death and dying is something that we don't often talk about. No, you're right. Um, and it's a part of life and so many people are dealing with that. Yes. And it can be so helpful and healing to hear conversations about it, I think. I know. I've, I've known people who suddenly died and it turned out they had cancer for a long time and never told anybody. I know. And I thought, well, I tell everybody now. <laughs> Yeah, and so um, obviously, you know, you've 
embrace that mm -hmm. diagnosis as best you can. Yes. Um, has it had an impact on your artwork? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Um, I don't, it, my artwork is looking a little bit different. I don't know if it's a lot different mm -hmm. from before. Like that would be two years ago. Yeah. Uh, I I really I can't answer that one. I, uh, I personally see quite an evolution in oh, your work you? over the last two That's years. Right. Yeah, because I've known your abstract collection for a while now, and um, it definitely to me has evolved and moved forward. I can't quite necessarily pinpoint. Yeah. Is it more simple, do you think, like before it was a little bit confused? I think it or... might be more confident, perhaps, is okay. the right word. I'm not sure. Um, and it also feels very personal to me, which with abstract, that can be a challenge sometimes, yes. right? Like as an audience always wants to relate to a painting, yes. right? And find something that they connect with. Um, and in abstract, when we don't have like, you know, trees, faces, right. Right. that can be difficult. And these paintings, I, for myself, and I think for our audience, I've been watching people interact with them for the past two days, mm -hmm. um, and really stopping and spending some time with them. I think they are connecting with people on a personal level. Oh, good. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I definitely think there's a, there's a progression. Something here. else I really enjoy about your work is the titles. Oh. Um, and it's funny, some artists really struggle with titles. And, titles uh, are yeah, <laughs> we've definitely gotten shows before that were landscape one through 25, yeah. right? Sure. Um, but you always have some kind of unique title mm -hmm. to your work. And I know you pick them at the end of the piece, generally, is that right? Not always. Not always? Uh, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Quite often, I have an idea, like, my, the subject of my paintings are very, very simple. Mm -hmm. You know, I get an idea, and I think, okay, this painting is going to be called such and such. And then I start painting it, and if it turns out to kind of look like that, then I'm happy. Yeah. If it doesn't look like that at all, <laughs> then I change the title. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Um, are there any that you would like to share? Um, well, the one show? behind you, losing him, that was very emotional for me. That that painting was really tough for me to do. Mm -hmm. It was. It's about my son. My son last year at this time was very ill, he was in the hospital, and the doctors thought he was going to die. And you know, if my son, I only have one son, mm -hmm. if my son died, I think I'd die too. I, I don't think I could cope with that. Yeah. So, um, so that one really meant a lot to me. Mm -hmm. you know. How's your son doing now? He's doing great. That's good. Yeah, he's, he's really great. He's lost weight, he looks wonderful. He's, he's very happy. They held his job for him. He was in the hospital for a month and then in sort of like a, 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 a rehab rehab, yeah, yeah. kind of thing for uh, another month. And they held his job for him. He's very happy. That's he's amazing. a chef. And he loves it. That's great. Did being a mother influence your art career at all? I'm sure it did. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> I think everything that happens in your life influences your art. Yeah. Did you do creative projects together? Yeah, was young? Not, not as much as I would have liked. His dad and I were divorced when he was four years old, and his father wouldn't give me any money at all. He, g he gave me um, $50 child support, but um, no income for myself at all. Yeah. So I had to paint like you wouldn't believe to try and make enough money just to keep a roof over our head. Yeah. So there wasn't often a lot of time to do a lot with my son and, and I regret that and, and I've asked him um, if, if that bothered him or if he was sad about that. He says, no, mom, I had a great life. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's good yeah. to hear. That's a, like, one thing to be a single mother, um, another thing to be a, an artist, yes. single mother. Was art always your main income stream? Uh, yes. Well, I, I was teaching for a while. Yeah, you have a te you have a, a teaching certificate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, didn't like it. Well, I, I liked the adult. I taught adults for okay. the last part of my life. Yeah. I loved that. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. I didn't like teaching children. Yeah, wasn't it good? 
no. But when I taught adults here in London, I only did that every Tuesday. So I did. I taught two courses on Tuesdays, mm -hmm. and the rest of the week I would paint. Yeah, that's amazing. I think that might have been part of it too. It's if you know, painting is so important for your yeah. emotional well-being. You need right. to make enough time for that. Right? Yeah, and that you know, it seems like sometimes I worry about myself because it seems like that's the only thing I really want to do. I just want to paint, yeah. and you know, sometimes my grandkids will come to visit, and I can't wait for them to go. <laughs> I didn't mean that. <laughs> um, you know, it, it gets to the point where you know people will come for a visit, and I'm thinking, is it time for them to go yet? Yeah, I want to get back to my painting, and I think that can't really be healthy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot of people want a, a passion like that in their life. It's kind of amazing to feel that way about your career. We all need balance, yeah. You know, between our, our relationships and and other right. things, and time outdoors, and you know, balance is good. But right, um, right now, but to, I feel. There's so little time left. You yeah. Know, if I have a couple of years left, I want to be painting. Yeah. And and I don't know why. Yeah. You know, who cares if there's more of my paintings out there? Who really cares? Yeah. And you just want I to guess I do. Yeah. So if someone asks you what do you want to be doing with the, the time that you have, it's painting. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> um, having been an artist for your entire life, and uh, as we were talking previously about women role models in the art world. Do you have any advice for younger creatives? You've got to really just get at it. Like so many young people, you know, they might get excited and paint for a few days and then they don't for weeks. So yeah. You have to, I think you have to get at it every day. Yeah. Even if it's just a matter of going into your studio or if it's a corner of your dorm bedroom. Yeah. Just get in there and do something every day, you know, clean your brushes if that's the only thing you can do. Yeah. It's, there are some times when I think, oh, you know, I can't think of one more thing to paint and I'll just go in my studio and I'll clean up. Yeah. And and then somehow I'll, I'll you know, out of the corner of my eye, I'll see a painting that wasn't working and I think, oh, I know what I can do with that and I'll start painting. That's a great piece of advice. I've never... I haven't actually heard that before. Just yeah. to be in your studio, in your space that's creative, yes, right? Yes, that is even, so important. Yeah, even if you're not necessarily ready to do something that day, yeah. to be there and um, and then find some inspiration. Yes, I yeah. would love to have a new studio, but I don't think that I'm not going to move now. I like your studio. Yeah. I do. It's not tall enough, you know. I can't put my easel up all the way. Oh, okay. But yeah. it's big enough. It know? is, there's and it has a nice. It's a walkout basement, right? Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's, there's lots, lots of light. Yeah, big patio door plus a big window. Mm -hmm. But I wish it was taller. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you keep a sketchbook? That is such a bad question. <laughs> I only ask because of the journal that you kept at yes. that previous question. I did that. Yeah. I did that then. Yeah. I'm not now. I have probably 20 sketchbooks that are half full because <laughs> I fall in love with a new sketchbook. I'll be at the yeah. art supply store and I'll go, oh, is that a very neat sketchbook? <laughs> and I'll buy it. And, and I've got all these sketchbooks that are only half full. And I think maybe I should just rip up the rest of the pages. But at the moment, I'm not sketching, and I really should be. Yeah. I feel guilty about that. <laughs> Don't feel guilty about it. Um, I like that you're inspired kind of just by the material of the sketchbook. Yes. Um, or when you first walked into the art store and just picked up the acrylic paints, right? Yes. Um, and often, I think creative individuals are so attracted to things and materials oh, and yeah. um, are often collectors kind of of other things. And I see. I, I love your home as well as your studio. Thank you. And I imagine, I don't know, it seems to me like an amazing place to kind of like foster creativity. Mm -hmm. There's art, there's books, there's color. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk to me a bit about your space or um, curating, surrounding yourself with things that bring joy to you? Well, my, I, let me think, I'll start at the beginning. I, I had a beautiful home. Yeah. And a few years after my husband died, I sold it and bought this condo, yeah. which is too big for me. You know, it's four bedrooms, three bathrooms. You know, it's, I don't <laughs> Not know. a huge downsize, I guess. No, it wasn't <laughs> huge at all. Um, 
and I totally renovated it. Mm -hmm. Like I was the contractor, I hired all the trades. Wow. I was there every morning with coffee and donuts when they started. Yeah. And I told them don't clean anything at all. So I arrived in the evening when they finished and I cleaned everything ready for the next day. So that went on from December until February. February 25th was my birthday. And that's when I moved in. And I wanted lots of color. I have a large art collection because with local artists mainly yeah. because um, they trade with me or I do buy art as well, mm -hmm. but often they'll trade. I love books. I just yeah. can't get enough books. My husband was terrible. Like when he died, we had about 40 boxes of books. Oh my God. <laughs> I tried to sell. <laughs> yeah. He wanted them. So he was a reader as well. Oh yeah, just amazing and a collector. So I just, I love having those things around me. I think if I were in a, more of a sterile, um, modern, contemporary kind of a setting, I don't think I'd be happy. Mm -hmm. I like I like to be crowded with all this stuff, yeah. but I'm not a messy person. No, you're not. It's, a, it's <coughs> no. beautifully, it's like a carefully curated um, collection in a home. It's, it is, and it's <laughs> like everything's, he seems to be in its place to me when I visit, I but there's something beautiful and happy like everywhere you look. So many people tell me they want to come over when I'm not home because yeah. they want to have just time spend to, some time instead of looking at me while we're talking. Yeah, yeah, I, I should, can see that. I should go upstairs and leave them alone. Yeah, <laughs> rent it out or something for yeah. the afternoon. But I, I'm, I hate to think that I'm a fussy person. But I do go around and, you know, I've got books on the coffee table and, and if, if the pile of books is crooked, I'll straighten it up. Mm -hmm. Or just a coaster yeah. on another table, I'll straighten Straight it up. It. Yeah, but that's, I think that's a way of spending time with your, with your space and your yeah. things too, I like right? touching my yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it's a very um, happy and creative space. Thank you. Let's talk a bit about this show being a pairing between you and Eric Atkinson, yes. or Ricky, as okay. so many of his friends call I him. I adore Ricky. Yeah. Yes. What's been your relationship with Ricky? It's not a big relationship. I see him, uh, oh, maybe a couple times a year. It was more, of course, when we were both younger. Yeah. And yeah, Ricky's Rick, 93 now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he came to my house, this was a few years ago and I was showing him some of my new paintings and, and then I showed him one that I did when I was about 19 years old living in New York. And I said, look at Ricky, I said, I've gone back to the beginning because my work at that time was looking quite a bit like the abstract expressionism where I started. Right. And he says, no, he says, you've gone back to yourself. And I just loved that. I thought, yeah. I, loved, I loved him saying that and I loved hearing that. And, you know, we, we will see each other at a party or at somebody else's house, and I have never seen him a lot, but every time I see him, I just adore him. Yeah. And he gave my husband one of his paintings, which is one of my favorite things. You know, if the house caught fire, I'd grab that yeah. painting and run. Yeah, yeah, treasured item. And, and you said, and a couple other people said, that there's some relationship between his work and mine, and, and the black that he has in his mm -hmm. work, it shows up in little bits in mine, whereas it's kind of all over in his. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a really interesting conversation going on here mm -hmm. between between your work, and that's the fun part for us of putting these shows together right. because the these correlations pop up that you maybe didn't even know were going to be there. Right. Um, and I think there is some similarities in the way you break up the surface into shapes mm -hmm. um, and some of the lines that are running through your work and again that high contrast and the use of black which is not that common in art, right. in art um, creates a really interesting dialogue between both of your work so yeah it's I, really wonder, I wonder if I did a painting without any black in it if I'd be happy with it maybe maybe a little time from now I'll yeah that. yeah you used a lot of black in the series previous to the paint the acrylic yeah. paintings um, so maybe, did it always kind of... No, I think it, it didn't, but it kind of anchors the painting for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Like if, if you took it out, you know, if, if we take that out... Yeah, yeah, we need that. Yeah. Contrast. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, and I like what you said about Ricky um, commenting on your work and kind of coming coming full circle or back to yourself. Um, he is very wise and says yes. some really quite poetic things about art. And he does. Yeah, he's, he's got a great like art critique mind as well as an yes, artist. Yes, I've mind. been to lectures that, that he has done and they're just wonderful. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. just, like, I can't even remember what he said, but I, I thought everything that came out of his mouth I thought was wonderful. Yeah, he's <laughs> a very smart, smart man. So mm -hmm. we're really excited to be showing both of you together. Uh, and it's amazing that to show two artists with such long um, art careers right. in the region and um, also that have known and worked together at Tielsen Gallery and, yes. and beyond. So yes. we thank you for being a part of this oh, exhibition. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I love this gallery and I love being here. So thank you very much. Yeah.